hey guys it's just on the case you know i'm always on the case so i am going to be talking about johnny gosh this is part two because last time i was here i was working on part one and i kind of got disturbed with some negative energy which i didn't it didn't disturb me i just pulled myself away from you know weird stuff but anyway um where I stopped that last time with Don Johnny Gosh was that his mother, his mother and father, well, his dad was actually out looking for him, you know, because at this point they realized Johnny was not, he wasn't in the house anymore. They realized that he had left early that morning and that he basically, um, trying to put this down, that he basically, um, had left on his own for the paper route. Normally, Johnny's parents, as I told you, normally they um, assist Johnny with the paper route in the morning because that was the deal. And the reason in my in my first part one, the reason why Johnny was doing the paper route is because he wanted to purchase a motorcycle. And that was actually teaching him like responsibility, having his own dependence, independence, and I guess he want he had, you know, previously the night before Johnny disappeared, he had asked his mom, could he do the paper route himself? His mom said it, he, she did not think it was a good idea, but his dad, he didn't kind of agree with the mom. He kind of felt like Johnny would be fine, but he still said that, you know, she said no, so no, and that they would go out together. But Johnny did tell his mom that night he loved her and, you know, how good of a mother she was and stuff and he seems like a very sweet person and then i he just i guess he'd said that you know because he knew he was gonna try something the next day and so he wanted to do the paper route himself um when Ms. mr gosh went looking for him when he realized that johnny was no longer in his room the papers were missed i mean the wagon was missing the neighbor said that he heard johnny creaking the wagon behind his house like he always does or you know to get to move the papers to get ready to do his route he heard him that morning johnny was going to you know get the papers like they go up to the stand to get the papers for that morning johnny was doing that and a man just pulled over beside him and was asking him for directions or something and Johnny felt weird about the situation, which me being a kid and knowing everybody in the neighborhood, I would have felt weird too. And I probably would have like tried to hurry up and get somebody else to take over like an adult. That's how I think he felt like, okay, why is this man asking me for directions? All these people. Um, so I think the man made Johnny feel uncomfortable. So Johnny was probably heading back home, back the way to his house and he never made it. So at that point, to come back, his dad, knowing that he's missing, goes back and lets Mrs. Gosh know and they call the cops. Cops don't show up until 45 minutes later. Mrs. Gosh has already did half of an investigation, talking to the boys that was at the stand, talking to the man that heard the cars and saw a car pull up to Johnny again, making a U-turn and then pulling off and skirting um, fastly until it disappeared. No Johnny though. And you know, my thing is with the police, why do you feel like you need to write stuff down? You need to do all this. Johnny is missing. They're doing all this right now and I understand it. Sometimes you just gotta run with what you got. Because in those seconds and in those hours and in those minutes, these kids are missing. These kids are being tortured. These kids are, you know, being in uncomfortable situations. And any in every second counts. So telling someone, oh, you have to wait 72 hours to report a missing person. Excuse me, sir, this is a missing child. I never understood that from the police. I never understood it. I was always upset, angry about that part. Um, then on top of that, <sighs> the police didn't even believe Mrs. Gosh. They didn't, 
it just seemed like to me they were trying to push it off. They didn't really want to get into that because they probably knew that other people had been talking about that. You know, I can't, I'm not going to say the words, but it's, I'm going to say moving children into inappropriate situations. Um, They believe that Johnny, first they believe that Johnny was just ran away. And Mrs. Gosh was like, he would never run away. And I was thinking about that. Why would he run away when he's trying to purchase a dirt bike? He's trying to get the money up to purchase a dirt bike. So he's going to run away from home. But the neighbor specifically said that he heard Johnny with the wagon. Like he always does when Johnny is getting ready to do his paper route. If Johnny wanted to run away, why would Johnny be moving the wagon behind the neighbor's house? Why don't he just creep out the front door because his parents would sleep anyway and, and just run away and leave the wagon and don't do the papers. So then, after a while, the police changed it to him being kidnapped. After time went by, which was very suspicious to me. I don't understand. A mother is saying her child is missing. Her child has never ran away from home. You don't have any evidence of this child running away from home. But you're telling the mom that he, he 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 ran away, but she's telling you that he went like he's he's been kidnapped. But then you want to wait a few, you know what I'm saying? And then you, then you want to say that that he's now now he's he's been kidnapped. Then a few months later, because the police still haven't don't have any suspects. Not trying. I just feel like this was just a messed up just real messed up investigation on the police part they should have started off strong and they would have got some strong answers at least would have had some type of a suspect you got a car you got a man pulling up on a kid asking for directions and then you got a kid disappearing and a car speeding off and people acknowledging that this happened but you're gonna say the kid was kidnapped no was was missed was ran away from home when the kid was actually kidnapped, then you come back later and say he was kidnapped when you should have said it from what the neighbor said. Miss Gosh had already did her writing and investigating for you because you were 45 minutes late. Then you want to give her a problem about what she has come together with, with witnesses that somebody had already approached her son that morning. That part, I did not understand because that just sounded like me. They was either being lazy or they just didn't care or they knew something. They were waiting for something to finish. Um, and these kind of things like this, they're really big and they can come into like big people, if you know what I mean, like stuff like this, big people are most of the time involved sometimes. Um, so with that being said, um, Mrs. Gosh also then again gets some news that her son later month in months was seen in Oklahoma. Asking and yelling and begging a woman for help while two men were dragging him away. But the police didn't really, I don't know. It's just like they have to have a certain this and that to do something. And it's just like you need to investigate everything. Everything that you get, you need to investigate it and you need to make sure it's clear all clear if it's not all clear do not throw it out because it could be saving somebody's life um they did have some private investigators and i'm not going to speak on investigators that much and yes i do have my notes here like i told you guys i do a lot of research um, there are important, very important parts that I'd like to pull out of this story. They did have an investigator, investigators. Some of them, I think, in my opinion, were crooked. I just do. How did they know all that information? How are you going to an audit? And you, uh, the kind of audit it was, it wasn't an audit for cars. So what kind of audit was it? What, what was, what was it really? Trafficking what? That's what I'm going to say. But anyway, what 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 how did what was you doing there and how did you know that was happening and why didn't you get a realm of police fbi people involved so they could shut the operation down you just come back to miss gosh with some stuff and it still is not helping her get her son back that's the part that i don't understand either 
And that's why I don't want to go into that because that's strange too. And I don't think people really, when they're looking into these stories, I don't think they really are listening to this mess. So the police waited 45 minutes. They knew Miss Gosh called. They waited 45 minutes. Then this investigator goes over here to some type of audit and it's really a trafficking thing. And he sees this stuff and he doesn't, I mean, come on. I don't understand. Maybe that could have shut everything down, but I'm just saying, didn't make sense to me. Then Johnny, Mrs. Gosh is asleep. And this is, uh, this, this is later in years. Um, this is like in, I want to say, I want to say this this was 1997, but before we get into Mrs. Gosh's statement in 1997, I want to get into Eugene, Eugene Martin, in August, on August the 12th, 1984, another paper boy, same place, uh, it's called Desmones, Moines, same place Johnny from, same paper place paper route whatever disappears never heard seen again johnny and him are put on a milk carton across america still can't find them right here we are we come up to march of 1986 now eugene was missing in 84 mark missing 86 these boys are from the same place. Not one time did these police officers find any one of these boys. This is ridiculous. They don't have a clue. All this power that these police officers, FBI, and all these people have, they don't have a clue where these boys were. And it's an old case, so what? Where, what happened to them? These parents don't have any type of nothing. They don't have nobody to bury. They don't have a story to go on, a, a, a witness to say, okay, I, I saw like years later, they don't have anything. It's just got quiet and nothing. Especially with Mark and Eugene, nothing. And it's sad because they came from the same place. And I'm sorry. And this is my opinion and my opinion only. But I feel like this case was a botched case. And it was botched from the beginning for them saying Johnny ran away from home. When he's sitting up there making a paper route to get a dirt bike. Went to a game with his parents before that day. He could have ran away at the game. I don't understand. Then Eugene and Mark are missing, and they're from the same town, and the investigation is not getting any better. You would have thought, and it shouldn't have took the second boy, but you would have thought after the second boy, they came up with some type of evidence, but they still didn't have anything, and I don't think they were doing all they could do to find these kids. How do you let three boys, 12-year-olds, in that range, area range, or a little bit older, how do you let them just disappear out of the same area and still don't have any clue to anything? Sounds a little bit strange to me. Then Mrs. Gosh says at 2.30 in the morning in 1997, I think it was of March of 1997. Yeah, March 1997. She wakes up at 2.30 in the morning to a knock at her door. Guess who it is? She says it was Johnny. She said by this time, Johnny was 27 years old. He, his hair was dyed black. And he opened his shirt to show her the birthmark that was on his chest. Now, if I was Miss Gosh, I would have got him to show me his birthmark on his chest, his leg, and the scar on his tongue. Because he did have those things. And But Miss Gosh knows her son. And she birthed him so she knows how the birthmark looks and if it was tamper with she knows so if miss gosh says that was her son she saw that was her freaking son she saw and that's the bottom line with that being said she told 
she talked to him. She said they talked for hours and hours, but he never told her where he was going, where he lived, and that he couldn't stay for long. And everything that she asked him, he had to look over to the guy who was one unidentified to the guy to ask for approval to speak to her or to answer a question. To me, it sounds like Johnny was doing what they were asking him to do. And people don't believe Miss Gosh because they don't understand. This is my opinion and my opinion only. I believe that Johnny was doing what those people were asking him to do. And he was doing it so that he could stay alive. So he did what they asked. And he did it so to the point that they felt like they could trust him. And I'm I'm thinking, and this is just my opinion, that they asked him maybe because he was being obedient, what is one thing he would like to do? And Johnny probably said, I want to see my mother. Please, just one time. Because he probably saw her all over the place, you know, looking for him. And he knew she loved him. So he wanted to see her and they probably made him a deal. Hey, you can go see her, but you got to take him with you. And there's some things you can talk about and some things you can't. If you do this, then blah, blah, blah will happen. But if you go and follow the rules, then you're good to go. And nobody believes Miss Gosh really about seeing her son, but she knows what she saw. Then we have Paul Bonacci. He shows up. Paul Bonacci shows up. Let me get this. Let me get this date right for Paul. Uh, I think Paul showed up in 19, Paul showed up in 1989. Paul was sent to prison along with another young lady because they were trying to tell the police officers and the FBI and whoever else wanted to speak to them. They were trying to tell these people what actually happened to them and what they were going through. And why they were doing what they were doing. And how they got caught doing what they were doing. Instead of the police believing them. They had the young lady retract her stuff. And threatened her. And told her you know if she didn't do this. Then she was going to get this. And I guess I don't know. She got scared. Stopped talking. Paul never stopped talking. Paul basically met up with Miss Noreen. And she came to see him. And he explained to Miss Noreen that he actually was around Johnny after Johnny was kidnapped. And that telling Miss Noreen things that only he would know if he was around Johnny. Like things like Johnny has a scar on his tongue. Johnny has a birthmark on his chest. Johnny has a burn scar below his, I think it's below his knee or his ankle. And the only way Miss Noreen said that you would know this is if you would have to have been around Johnny to know these things. Johnny would talk about going to yoga with his mom and, you know, and maybe this was something to help him cope with his situation, thinking about how his mom would do the yoga stuff and, you know, if he took, she would take him with, it, with her. It probably helped him out a lot. Paul was not believed, however, for that. And he did try a lawsuit against a certain someone. And that person never came forth to fight the lawsuit. So he won $1 million for the things he had gone through. And to, you know, from what I know... Paul always stuck, stuck to his story. The problem with Paul from the interviews and from me watching him, because this is some thorough stuff that I did. Me watching Paul, Paul had different personalities. He would be one person one moment, and then they would ask him, can he speak to so-and-so? And he would say, sure, and turn into that person. But it wasn't like an acting thing. It was more like this was serious and this was actually what was going on like Paul was actually switching people and the person that could tell a lot about Johnny he would tell a lot and he would tell about how 
they were programmed and then stuff like that and sometimes it wouldn't work and they would have to reprogram them and I think because of the traumatic stuff that Paul Benashi went through I think they held that against him because basically he was he had some mental ish health issues and so they could not he would not be a, a a very good witness, I guess, because he changed personalities. But my thing is, they didn't never take into consideration that this man knew where this man's birthmarks. How do you know what's on somebody's tongue if you ain't never been around a person? I'm just, I'm just really concerned about that. To this day, because Paul Benashi has gotten out. He's been out long time he's had a family and everything after all the abuse and everything he suffered you know from being a part of that he still was able to make it out and have his own family and do his own thing you know and to this day they have no suspects this is a cold case no suspects no johnny no body no no mark no eugene no nothing no nothing and i think Paul once mentioned Mark and said that Mark was crying for his mother at one point. But he never mentioned Mark again. So I don't know what they did to Mark or what happened to Mark. But maybe something bad happened to him because he wanted to go home. And he wasn't very as strong as Johnny was. But I believe that Johnny was strong and he was trying to take what they were doing to him to survive. And... A man came out later on and then everybody was saying that was Johnny because they were trying to figure out how did this man get into the White House? How is this man able to do all this stuff? How is this man doing this and that? And he doesn't have any kind of education, no kind of experience in, in any of these jobs, but he's able to go to the White House and do this for the president and all this other stuff. And they kept saying he was Johnny Gosh. But the man kept coming out saying he wasn't. Like, I... I know that, that the mother is grieving for her son and I, I'm so sorry about the situation, but I'm not him. I have my own kids and my own family and my mom is, is you know, is, is thinking about this stuff too. And imagine how she's feeling that someone else is saying that, that, I'm her, that I'm this woman's child. But with that being said, Johnny is still no, there's no word, nothing about Johnny nothing to be found about him you know just all that we have from before from paul and everything that mrs gosh whatever our conversation for hours and hours she had with her son that's what she has and um it's sad that she still doesn't have you know the relief and the comfort of knowing that either her son is found and he's okay or that he's laid to rest and she was able to lay him to rest. She has no idea. Sometimes, though, in my opinion, that might be a good thing, you know. And sometimes it could be a bad thing because you're still out there wondering where your child, where your child is and what are they doing? Like, are they okay? Are they somewhere freezing? Like, you, she said she was having a hard time sleeping and stuff because she didn't know if Johnny had somewhere to sleep or what was going on. And that's hard because I'm a mother. I understand that very much so. And that's why this story is very important. Not only because Johnny Gosh still has not been found, but Mark and Eugene came from the same area this man came from. And they are nowhere to be found as well. And the police took their precious time to get to these parents to get to miss gosh to help with the investigation normally the police are quicker than that and i feel like they dropped the ball because they came 45 minutes late sounds like to me they were making phone calls of their own something is not right with the stories and they didn't want to hear anything that paul Benashi had to say whether he had a mental issue or not i still think they should have heard him out guys This is just on the case. 
you know i'm always on the case